Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Keep It Real. One of the things that the human body needs to um, stay healthy is the proper levels of nutrition. And by nutrition, not only are we talking about the macronutrients like uh, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, but also the micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. And you've heard of all these things like vitamin C and B vitamins and vitamin D and vitamin A and then minerals like calcium and selenium and magnesium. So all these nutrients are required for a whole variety of things in the body and unfortunately most people are not really learning about these things and learning about the nuances of these different nutrients and that not all nutrients are created equally. There's a whole broad variety of quality of these nutrients that you can find on the marketplace and most doctors are not educated in how to identify what nutrients are better than others and maybe more importantly what nutrients and what type of nutrient is best for what type of health condition. So I wanted to feature um, a key mineral today and the mineral you've heard of is called magnesium. So magnesium is a very interesting mineral. It's required in what we call macro amounts. We need a whole lot of magnesium to function optimally. And there's other minerals that we only need in micro amounts. Think of like selenium. Selenium, the body only requires microgram levels. So if you were to you know, purchase a selenium product, probably each capsule only contains like 200 micrograms. So a microgram is, so a thousand micrograms equals one milligram. And so magnesium is required in, you know, hundreds of milligrams per day. And so we need a consistent, abundant source of magnesium. Magnesium is uh, an important nutrient that has had a lot of research on it and so we understand really how magnesium works pretty well and we know some key things we know that it helps to lower blood pressure so you know blood pressure being one of the most important risk factors for heart disease heart disease as you know being the number one killer in the United States and probably most of the rest of the Western world blood pressure is a key risk factor for heart disease so if we can do a little thing every day to help improve our blood pressure to help decrease the chance of getting heart disease that'd be something that you might want to put on your list. So it lower, lowers blood pressure. It also reduces the risk of diabetes. Diabetes is, it's a very fast growing condition of the Western world and it's a very debilitating, very social, economic, medical expense and it's really life altering. It's a condition that you want to try to avoid at all costs. And again, magnesium, has been shown in research studies to help reduce the risk of, of diabetes. Um, some other conditions like PMS, premenstrual syndrome, that a lot of women suffer from prior to their menstrual cycle, um, magnesium has been shown to help lower the symptoms of PMS. And um, other conditions like fibromyalgia and chronic muscle pain, magnesium has been shown to help treat those conditions as well. It's also a, um, a key cofactor in something like 300 different enzymatic and physiological processes in the body. And so it is a very, very useful nutrient in the system. And in that regard, it helps to also lower symptoms of anxiety and depression because magnesium is a cofactor for the production of neurotransmitters. You've heard of certain neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine and GABA. And these neurotransmitters help to affect our, our mood and our behavior. And magnesium is a key cofactor for the production of those neurotransmitters. So again, it can influence a whole host of uh, systems in the body. But like I said at the beginning, magnesium is... There's lots of different types of magnesium and not all types are created equally. So I just want to give you a quick breakdown on the different types and also the different uh, levels of quality of magnesium. So basically, um, let me first talk about what type of magnesium to avoid. 
these are the types of magnesium that you want to look at whatever supplement that you're taking, whether it's for bone health or it's just a general multi, and look at the type of magnesium. And after the word magnesium, there's gonna be another word. And if you see the word oxide, that is probably the worst form of magnesium that you can get in a supplement. And it's very poorly absorbed, and I would just suggest that you stay away from it. If a manufacturer is using magnesium oxide, they really don't care about your health. So I would suggest avoiding it. One that's probably almost as bad as magnesium oxide is magnesium gluconate. Magnesium gluconate, again, is a very poorly absorbed form of magnesium. It's very, very cheap for manufacturers to procure, to put into their supplement, and I would um, avoid that one as well. So those are the ones that you want to avoid. So which ones are good? Um, one that's really common, but it's also really good, is magnesium citrate. Magnesium citrate is a good kind of, I'd call it like a mid-shelf magnesium. Magnesium oxide and gluconate are kind of bottom shelf uh, as far as quality goes of uh, magnesium. Magnesium citrate, it's kind of mid-shelf. It's a good all-around magnesium. If you're taking magnesium citrate, it's no problem. It's a good all-around magnesium. The citrate part of it also has some extra medicinal value. Um, citrate, the other name for citrate is citric, citric acid. So magnesium citrate has citric acid as part of its makeup. And why this might be helpful is for a few specific things. Um, when I have a patient who has uh, recently had kidney stones and we want to try to avoid further production of kidney stones, most kidney stones are made from calcium oxalate and citric acid has been shown to help dissolve those calcium oxalate stones. So if you have suffered from magnesium, uh, excuse me, from uh, kidney stones and you want to avoid a future one, magnesium citrate would be the form of magnesium that I'd recommend for you. And you probably have to take several hundred milligrams a day, somewhere between, you know, maybe 200 and 400 milligrams a day um, to really get a sufficient amount of the nutrient. So that's magnesium citrate. Uh, there's also magnesium malate. Man magnesium malate has malic acid in it. And malic acid is a, is a nutrient that is produced in the human body. And it's important for things like muscle function. And so a lot of people who have conditions like fibromyalgia or they just have chronic muscle pain, um, magnesium malate might be a really good choice. And so people that um, I treat that have a chronic muscle tension, a muscle soreness, um, the kind of magnesium I often recommend is magnesium malate, excellent form of uh, magnesium. Um, I'd say magnesium glycinate is the top shelf form of magnesium. If you don't need mag magnesium for those other specific conditions that require you know, citrate or malate and you just need straight magnesium, uh, somebody told you or you have certain symptoms or you had one of those conditions that we talked about that uh, magnesium might be helpful for, magnesium glycinate would be the one um, that's really the top shelf form of magnesium. So um, beyond that, there are even certain quality levels of magnesium glycinate. So the best form of my magnesium glycinate is um, is in a form that we call um, a mineral chelate. So the mineral chelate form of magnesium glycinate is very, very, very highly absorbable. And this is, let me just contrast that with magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is so poorly absorbed that it stays in your gut and it causes water to retain in your lower intestine and it can actually give you diarrhea. Any magnesium in super higher amounts can give you diarrhea, but magnesium oxide is one that uh, really, really can cause diarrhea. So that's like the only application for magnesium oxide. If you are very constipated and you just need to have a bowel movement, take some magnesium oxide and that'll really, you're not gonna absorb any magnesium out of that, but it will help you have a, a bowel movement. But on that note, other forms of magnesium are probably just as good for that, but also you can absorb some of the magnesium, like magnesium citrate. But magnesium glycinate, if you really need a good absorbable form of magnesium, magnesium gly glycinate, uh, particularly the amino acid chelated form, 
um, is uh, is top shelf. There's nothing better th better than that. So, if your nutrient manufacturer is using um, mineral chelate of magnesium glycinate, they really care about your health. So, um, I want to show you what that would look like. I actually have a product here. Here it is, magnesium glycinate. Hopefully you can see that, that's right. We're doing a little product placement here on Keep It Real. So that's magnesium glycinate. And let me just point out on the back, that magnesium glycinate, and if you can see it, it says T-R-A-C-C-S, or T-R-A-A-C-S, Trax. If you have the Trax form of magnesium glycinate, there's literally nothing better than that on the market. So if I need somebody to really absorb their magnesium, this one is by far the best form of magnesium that you can get. So um, I hope that educates you a little bit about magnesium. And you might be wondering about food sources of magnesium, which is always primary. You always wanna make sure that people are getting the majority of their nutrients from their foods. Diet is centerpiece to promote optimal health. So the foods that contain magnesium are the ones that you know about as healthy foods, like whole grains, um, leafy green vegetables, and um, nuts and seeds. Those are really um, the foods that by far have the, um, the greatest amount of magnesium. But guess what? The level of magnesium in those foods is dictated by the magnesium in the soil, the health of the soil. So if these foods are grown in soil that is you know, depleted of magnesium, guess what? You're not getting very much magnesium out of those foods. And that's why we have to supplement people so, so much. I can't just say, oh, you know, go have some uh, nuts and seeds and some leafy greens, although I do that, but it has to be more than that. Oftentimes, if a person is suffering from one of these conditions that we talked about, like blood pressure issues, or we're trying to reduce the chance of diabetes, or they have anxiety or depression, or muscle soreness, or they suffer from PMS, any of these conditions, magnesium might be a great uh, part of the solution for that. But diet alone is probably just not gonna do it because so much of the soil that our foods are grown in is depleted of these key uh, nutrients. And like I said before, magnesium is a macronutrient, meaning we need a lot of it. The body uses it a ton. And if, um, if you're stressed out, if you have a, a high energy kind of life, you probably, re probably require even more magnesium. So it's a really key nutrient. And I'd encourage you to only stay with the really, you know, top, you know, at least mid shelf and top shelf form of magnesium, which is going to be magnesium citrate. It's going to be magnesium malate, particularly if you have conditions that are best for those type of uh, citric acid and malic acid. But if you really want the, the most top shelf form of magnesium, there's, uh, there's, no, there's not a nutrient better than magnesium glycinate. So, I hope you learned something. Remember, my, uh, my job here is always just to inform you about things that you may not be learning uh, from anybody else. And, um, and if you suffer from any of those conditions, then uh, magnesium might be uh, a good solution. So, hope that helps. We'll talk to you next time. Keep it real.